Now, from CBS News Miami, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy. Later in the show, we will take a closer look at the 988 suicide and mental health hotline in the state of Florida and whether enough is being done by the state to make that system work. And we will also hear from a Republican state senator who is sponsoring this year's condo bill that promises greater accountability for condo boards and associations. But we begin with Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz and the growing threat of anti-Semitism that took center stage this week during hearings on Capitol Hill. Let's start with the broader picture. How serious an issue is it and, and what can be really done about it? No, it's a serious issue, Jim. Uh, when we're seeing uh, you know, people on the street holding signs, say, gas the Jews, kill the Jews during ceasefire uh, rallies, ceasefire is a foreign policy. I may disagree with it, but it's a foreign policy. Uh, the gassing of the Jews and the killing of Jews is not a foreign policy unless it's a foreign policy of the Germans of the early 40s. Uh, and so you know, we're seeing that in this country. We're seeing people just be silent. When when they when they see that happening, we see people ripping down posters of Jewish Jewish hostages saying, oh, these people are not real, almost like a mental health illness. They're like clawing at these things uh, while, while they're being filmed and their lives are probably going to be ruined. A and in the crescendo moment, if you want to know where we stand in anti-Semitism today in this country, you only have to look at the university presidents testify. These are Ivy League university presidents. Elise Stefanik asked a softball question. It was not a trick question. Is the killing of Jews, calling for the genocide of Jews, is that harassment? Does it violate the code of conduct? And their answer wasn't, well, of course. Their answer was, well, it depends on the context. Well, what is the context, Jim? The context of how we kill the Jews? Another answer was, well, it depends if it moves into conduct. Oh, so we have to wait for the killing for that to be harassment? It was such a failure, but it shows you right now, unfortunately, where our top universities are when dealing with Jewish students. There is no doubt in my mind, and there should be no doubt in your viewer's mind, that if this was happening to LGBTQ students, if this was happening to Hispanic students, if this was happening to Black students, that answer would have been, yes, that's harassment. You cannot go around the campus and say you want to kill Black students. If the KKK was marching on campus saying we want to kill Black students, right, that would clearly be a code of conduct violation. Those students would probably be gone. Uh, uh, the president of Harvard uh, also, when she was asked a question, would she want a neo-Nazi student at her university? She said, well, that obviously doesn't comport with Harvard's values, but we have a wide berth of thought here. Really? Oh, I didn't realize that the wide range of conversation should be include Nazis. Do you think? Let me let me jump in. Do Do you think those university presidents should resign? They should be resign. They should resign or be fired. I don't care whichever way they go. They cannot stay. They set a terrible example for their students. They were supposed to come to Congress and make it better. They were supposed to come to Congress and say, "Listen." This is problem on campus. We were slow to respond. We're working on it now. But instead, they made it worse. They made Jewish students, made them more, more uncomfortable than they already are on campus. They failed. If there was a course on how to be a university president, if there was a course on how to testify in front of Congress, they both failed. Their students, when they fail an exam, don't get to just you know do a do-over, right? You fail. They failed. They should no longer be there. But back to your question about it being a bipartisan issue, Jim. As you know, bipartisanship right, is falling by the wayside here in Washington, D.C., except when it comes to being an anti-Semite. There are the Republican Party has neo-Nazis that you know do marches. We've seen them in the state of Florida. And we see Republicans really quiet about that because it's their voters. And then on the left, right, my friends that are you know, for rights for everybody, for all sorts of things, right? Never see a cause that they don't want to get involved uh, involved in. And yet during these ceasefire rallies, they see people advocating for the killing of Jews, crickets, silence. And so anti-Semitism is a problem in both parties. It's very easy for Democrats to call out Marjorie Taylor Greene, and it's very easy for Republicans to call out the squad, but it's much harder to do it and call out your own party. And I just think that when we're talking about anti-Semitism, this is not a team sport. I'm taking off my blue jersey. If it's within my, if it's within my party, I'm going to call it out. Why do you think we're seeing such a rise of it right now? 
I think it's always been there, Jim, right? I mean, it's it's not like people are just learning about the hatred of Jews. Like this is a, a new a new thing. Um, this has been going on for a long period of time and, and we have different inflection points of when it happens. But I think social media has really amplified, uh, is really amplified this because hate is pervasive everywhere on social media. I don't care what platform you're on, but obviously look on TikTok, which the algorithms, you know, can be manipulated by China and Russia and you can create echo chambers. Uh, you, you know, they're feeding these kids misinformation, wrong pictures, wrong information, all sorts of different stuff. And and they're they're hyping it up. Uh, you actually heard at the Republican debate last night that actually watching TikTok makes you 17 percent more anti-Semitic, uh, according according to a study. So social media has a huge impact on why we're seeing these kids go out in the street and chant for stuff that they don't even understand, quite frankly. Let me broaden it out now to talk about the Israeli aid package, which is also now tied, you know, President Biden wants to tie it to Ukraine aid, to aid for Taiwan, as well as border security. And that seems to be going nowhere right now as as talks with regard to border security funding have, have fallen flat and Republicans have rejected what Democrats have proposed. What's the answer here? Where do you see this going right now? Well, look, I think the answer is having a larger package on border security with the Ukraine funding, the Israel aid, and the humanitarian aid that we also need in Gaza. I think you're gonna to have to put it all together and you're gonna to have to make it one one big package. And I think Democrats are gonna to need to do more on the border. I think President Biden said that he's willing to do more. I think the American people wanna to, wanna to see that. As we're you know helping our allies around the world, we also need to help ourselves. Um, you know, but I think what the Republicans are asking for uh, right now is is just way too much. We're not building a wall. Uh, they're st they're still they're still litigating things of three or four years ago that have proven not to work. But there's all sorts of policies that can be changed. There's all sorts of technology that can be used. Uh, and, you know, and you know, increasing border agents uh, at the border. All, I'm for all of those things. But you know, look, Speaker Johnson got us into this mess. He could have had a clean bill on Israel, totally clean, right? Right after October 7th in the first week of him becoming speaker. And instead what he did is he decided to tie that to the IRS, try to save uh, Americans money. It actually didn't, it wasn't budget neutral. It actually was gonna cost us money the way, the way he did it. He was told that bill was dead in the Senate. So rather than bringing Democrats and Republicans together on the Capitol steps, he decided to divide us and he killed Israel aid. That bill could have been law over a month ago. And so now Israel's getting swept up in the Ukraine border argument. Do you see uh, likely that they might propose a clean Israeli bill and just take that out? And would you support that and leave Ukraine funding in doubt? Well, look, I, I, right now, this is a place of incrementalism, Jim. We don't do really big things here. And when we do, it's, you know, it's very limited. So quite frankly, if we have to have separate votes on it, I'll do separate votes. If we can do it all in one package, let's do it all in one package. However we get there, we have to get there because... Right now, our allies are watching, right? Congress fail. Our enemies are laughing as Congress fails. It looks like the only thing the 118th Congress can do is expel a member and remove a speaker. It doesn't look that we can actually help our friends and help defeat our enemies. Uh, so it's, it's vitally important that we get this done, whether it's before Christmas or after Christmas. Speaking of House leadership, we know that uh, Speaker McCarthy, former Speaker McCarthy, has announced that he's retiring, that he's leaving the House, as is Patrick McHenry, who was the interim speaker for a short period of time. What does that tell you? Well, look, I, I never thought Speaker McCarthy was going to stay after, you know, he his, he was removed as speaker by his own members. Uh, I, I thought that, you know, he served as speaker and, and that would probably be the end. And it was just a matter a matter of timing. But watching him and McHenry go in the same week and other retirements, if you look at who's retiring over the last couple of weeks, you're, you're seeing people who are mostly reasonable and rational and try to get deals together leave. And they're going to be replaced by more chaos. Donald Trump is in full control of the Republican Party. If you want to know, if you think to yourself, oh, that when maybe Donald Trump is done, the party will turn back. No, it is systemic. The Republicans in the House don't want to govern, right? They don't want to do anything. All they want to do is, is destroy stuff. They don't want to build stuff. You know, the Freedom Caucus, which is the most extreme caucus, they're growing, they're full in control, and watching these moderate, reasonable members that I'm happy to work with and have sponsored bills with, and, and you know, I'm a bipartisan guy. You're talking to a Democrat who worked for a Republican. 
watching these folks go, it's the continue breaking of the House of Representatives. A Democrat who used to work for a Republican, that Republican being Ron DeSantis, how do you think he's doing so far in this presidential campaign of his? Well, look, I, I, it doesn't matter how Ron is doing or Nikki is doing or, or, or uh, you know, the uh, Vivek is doing, uh, uh, because at the end of the day, it's all about Donald Trump. It's all about Donald Trump. It's been about Donald Trump. We're, this the debate last night is the first presidential debate that I can remember. We had four people up there literally fighting for second place. And second place isn't going to be the vice president's spot, okay? None of them are going to get picked. Uh, and so they, they won't even mention him. It's like Voldemort, like no one say his name, you know, he who should not be named. It's the weirdest thing I think we've seen in politics in modern history where we're having these debates and the person who's going to win, the person who's going to be the nominee is not only not there, but we please, please don't say anything bad about him. Don't criticize him. So look, Ron is governor of Florida. He's going to come back to being governor of Florida. That, that's what it appears the race is headed. When we come back, the new 988 helpline is an incredibly valuable resource for people dealing with mental illness in our community. But is it getting the support it needs? We'll take a closer look. Stay with us.